Chapter Fifty Nine of Women of History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Women of History by Anonymous. Chapter Fifty Nine. Lady Grizel Jervisfood, sixteen sixty five. Anderson. Grizel Hume, born in 1665, was daughter of Patrick Hume, Baron of Polworth, and became the wife of George Bailey of Jervisfood. She began her life during the troubles of the Scottish persecution. At the time of her father's liberation from prison, she was little more than ten years of age, and soon after those romantic incidents occur in her life which have given her a historical celebrity. From the tact and activity, with which, far beyond one of her years, she accomplished whatever she was entrusted with, her parents sent her on confidential missions, which she executed with singular fidelity and success. In the summer of that same year, when Robert Bailey of Jervisfood, the early and intimate friend of her father, was imprisoned for rescuing his brother-in-law, Mr. James Kirkton, from a wicked persecutor, Captain William Carstairs, she was sent by her father from his country house to Edinburgh, a long road to try if from her age she could get admittance into the prison unsuspected and slip a letter of information and advice into his hand and bring back from him what intelligence she could proceeding on her journey she succeeded in getting access to bailey though we are not informed in what way but in whatever way young grizel got access to bailey and whatever were the circumstances of their interview she successfully accomplished the purpose of her mission it is also to be observed that it was in the prison on this occasion that she first saw mr bailey's son and that then and there originated that intimacy and attachment between him and her which afterwards issued in their happy marriage when in october sixteen eighty three robert bailey was apprehended in london and sent down a prisoner to scotland her father who was implicated in the same patriotic measure for preventing a popish successor to the british throne for which Bailey was arrested, had too good ground to be alarmed for his own personal safety. But he was allowed, it would appear, to remain undisturbed in his own house till the month of September next year, when orders were issued by the government for his apprehension, and a party of troops had come to his house on two different occasions for that purpose, though they failed in getting hold of him. Upon this he found it necessary to withdraw from home and to keep himself in concealment till he got an opportunity of going over to the continent the spot to which he betook himself for shelter was the family burying place a vault underground at polworth church at the distance of a mile from the house where he was no person knew but lady grizel hume and one man james winter a carpenter who used to work in the house and of whose fidelity they were not disappointed the frequent examinations to which servants were at that time subjected and the oaths by which it was attempted to extort discoveries from them made grizel and her mother afraid to commit the secret to any of these by the assistance of james winter they got a bed and bedclothes carried during the night to his hiding-place and there he was concealed for a month during which time the only light he had was that admitted by means of a chink at one end through which nobody on the outside could see who or what was in the interior while he was abode in this receptacle of the dead grizel with the most exemplary filial tenderness and with the most vigilant precaution ministered to his temporal wants and comforts regularly at midnight when men were sunk in sleep she went alone to this dreary vault carrying to him a supply of food and drink and to bear him company she stayed as long as she could taking care to get home before day to prevent discovery she had a great deal of humor in telling a story and during her stay she took a delight in telling him nor was he less delighted in hearing her tell him such incidents at home as had amused herself and the rest of the family and these were often the cause of much mirth and laughter to them both grizel's adventures were continued into holland whither her father retired and where she showed her natural traits of sagacity those marks of genius for which she has been celebrated she wrote many pieces of poetry, and one in particular, Verna My Heart Leaked I Would Dee, which has been praised as simple, lively, and tender. Her personal appearance is thus described by her daughter, Lady Murray. She was middle-sized, well-made, clever, 
in her person very handsome with a life and sweetness in her eyes very uncommon and great delicacy in all her features her hair was chestnut and to her last she had the finest complexion with the clearest red in her cheeks and lips that could be seen in any one of fifteen which added to her natural constitution might be owing to the great moderation she had in her diet throughout her whole life pottage and milk were her greatest feast and by choice she preferred them to everything though nothing came wrong to her that others could eat water she preferred to any liquor and though often obliged to take a glass of wine she always did it unwillingly thinking it hurt her and did not like it end of chapter fifty nine recording by linda fredericks modesto california august 2012.